Welcome to MommyCast. Today we're talking about the uh, in-phone, in-app in purchases on the iPhone and on the iPod Touch. It's been a really hot topic lately. Yeah. It's actually, shocking, actually. I think we, there was a, an article that said that a child had actually charged $1,300 worth of in-app purchases. And Smurf berries is what they bought. <laughs> Smurf $99 per wagon Smurf berries. First of all, I it want makes to know me why like, I think ninety nine dollars. Why is that reasonable is at all? Reasonable, even I know. for an adult. I know. I mean, well, it just it to me it's well sketchy, think, very wait, sketchy. Before we go on, I think we need to. For there may be some viewers out there who don't really know what an in app purchase is. Okay, you explain so, it. So, if you have an application that you purchase for your iPhone, for your iPod Touch, or for your iPad. Um, these are the, the the things that reside on your phone or on your mm -hmm. iPad. Like the that games, you can play or the games things, yeah. and everything, you know. And so you you open these games and you start playing them. And some of them say, you know, would you like to purchase Smurf berries for your Smurfs? And the, and you can actually there's an option to do that. And then you purchase them, and it's actually real dollars that you're using. And but then those get incorporated into the game. Yeah. But it's tricky because there are a lot of kids games out there that do have an economy. You know, my kids right. like that, um, what's that penguin game? Uh, Club Penguin. Club Penguin. They love that. And that has an economy on it. They, they play games, they earn whatever, and Points then they, they, and then they mm -hmm. buy themselves furniture or whatever. So kids are used to kind of playing these games that have money or whatever, an right. economy associated with it. So a lot of times they don't know that what they're purchasing is actually real money. Real money, right. And you don't know. Mm -hmm. until you get your bill, which sometimes there's a delay when you buy something in iTunes. There's a delay, like I don't get an email saying what I purchased for like a couple days sometimes. Right. And so you don't even know. that. You're, and, and my first reaction was when I heard about this, I was like, well, who's giving the kid the password? Because typically anytime you purchase something through the iTunes store, right. you have to put your password in. Right. Now, what what my understanding is now is that there is a 15 minute lag time from the time that you put your password in, it leaves it open for 15 minutes and doesn't ask for that password again right. for 15 minutes. And so, it's, say for instance, you let you, your child says, "Can I purchase this app?" You say, you say "Yeah." Fine. You, put you your type password in your password in. in. The app downloads. The kid starts playing it, and there's still time where you're. Your password is live. So your credit card that's associated with yep. your iTunes account is getting charged, and, and you don't even charge. know. Right. Mm -hmm. And this has happened. I mean, that was the the biggest. The fifteen hundred dollars was or thirteen thirteen hundred dollars. Uh -huh. And then there was another um, child who bought one hundred fifty dollars worth of something within the game and stuff. Right. And here was my first reaction to that. My first reaction was, why are the kids perusing the Ooh. app store? Because mm -hmm. and I, I, I if this is not default, and a lot of people are saying it's not really clear. But to me. If you go through the general settings on the iPod Touch and the iPhone or whatever, you can put parental controls. You can disable things. Mm -hmm. You can disable the uh, YouTube, Safari, uh, the iTunes Store, the App Store. If it's your phone and you have shows, you've got Entourage or something on there that you don't want your kids to watch, you can turn on restrictions for movies or TV shows that are above a certain right. level. I mean, there's all these things. There's a button for in-app purchases. Right, that you can actually, and I think a lot of parents don't know this. I think, first of all, they don't realize what's happening, what's happening right. until maybe it's too late. And then they don't realize that there's a way that they can actually prevent this. And that, So if you are giving your child your iPhone or your iPod Touch or your iPad to play games with, there's actually a restriction where you can actually go in and turn off in-app purchases. And that would be... Our recommendation. Yeah, I would say do would, it. Would solve the issue. And the other thing I gotta say is, don't even bother with parental controls if you're not going to protect your password. Right. A lot of parents use the same passwords all the time, or they put the password in when they know the kid is looking over their shoulder. Right. And and I have to say I'm guilty of that. <laughs> I want my because, kids act like I am the worst mother in the world because I make them actually leave the room. Right. My my brain is not working as well as it used to, and so I feel like if I have the same password for everything, I'm just not going to forget it. But that leaves us open to all sorts of problems. And right. so, Because you your kids will figure it out. Yeah. You know. They, I, and one they time do. I walked in Kate's room, I had, the, I had parental controls on the DVR. Mm -hmm. And I walked into her room, and she'd actually written down the password on her little whiteboard in her room so she wouldn't forget it. Uh-huh. And I was like, time to change the passwords. Right. But, you know, yeah. I mean, I even, I'm, I go so far as, you know, our TV faces the, the window, mm -hmm. so there's a reflection. And so if they stand in the next room, they can see the reflection. I right. make them 
go all the all way into another room. And they think I'm yeah. unreasonable. And if I'm not going to make them leave the room, I'll just, I'll just actually cover their eyes. <laughs> because I don't want them peeking. But I mean, because it's a huge hassle to turn on the parental controls if you're not going to protect that password. Right. And I think, and I think that's one of the things. I mean, it's just, you know, as parents, we're always kind of going, it's just one more thing that we have to do. It's just one more thing that we have to do. But you have to determine whether this is really important to you. And we've talked about this many times on our show yeah. about the fact that, you know, blanket internet access for your young children is, is dangerous. It's like, opening a whole world to them that they aren't ready to really, you know, experience. And, and saying, you know, my kid's a good kid, sure. You know, my kids are good kids too. However, they can accidentally come across stuff that once they see it, they can't unsee it. You know? Right. And I, I mean, I was, I've talked to people who said they didn't know that the iPod Touch could jump onto any Wi-Fi, any open Wi-Fi source. And then they've got access. Right. And and your your, your phone, Xbox three sixty, your DS, your DS, your Wii. Your Wii, all of those can jump onto the internet if you have a Wi Fi. Yeah. And so you you do have to be really careful with this. But I think really the parents have full oh, we have the full we, control over this know. situation and they need to use the tools that they've been given by Apple. Right. Right? Right. Yeah. So what are you doing? To prevent this from happening, yeah, we want to know. Household. We need help. Too. Yeah, let us know at Facebook.com/slash/MommyCast or Twitter.com/slash/MommyCast. Mama, don't you know me?